Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we will be discussing level 2 market data for futures trading. We're going to go over exactly what level 2 market data is, how to use it for your trading strategy, and the evolution of level 2 market data uh, from trading in the pits now to uh, electronic trading. First we'll go over the difference between level 1 and level 2 data. Level 1 data essentially just shows the best bid and the best offer. If you'd like to see more levels for level two data, you have to have a proper rhythmic connection that shows that. But once you do, you can go into the depth of market under settings and view and scroll down to number of levels where you can show additional levels for level two data. So now, Every price beyond the best bid and the best offer is level two data. And again, you can set this to however you'd like, however many levels you'd like, um, where you can see the level two data beyond where the market is currently trading. Before we dig deeper into level two market data, let's quickly look back at how pit traders used similar data to make buy or sell decisions. Before everything went electronic, trading was done through open outcry. Business was carried out in person with thousands of traders shouting orders at each other across the pit. With no online trading, large traders off the floor had to call in their orders by phone. A trader would then take the order down to the pit to get it filled. Observant traders in the pit were familiar with who worked for large institutions and would notice when those traders picked up the phone. Knowing that an order was coming to the market, they would try to outrun the incoming order. In a flurry of activity, traders would take positions speculating on whether the incoming order was a buy or a sell. Most trading pits closed years ago, and new entrants to the market usually only know the market through a computer screen. Instead of seeing other traders scramble to get in positions, we see numbers change on a screen. It's a different form of trading, and many pit traders had a difficult time moving over to electronic trading. Such traders relied on the ability to see and hear other traders to get a read on the market. In electronic trading, we can't see or hear the people we are trading with. However, that does not leave the independent trader without any tools to judge the markets. Electronic trading gives us a different tool to use to our advantage. Computers allow us to quickly see and analyze every order placed. We can instantly get a full view of what's going on in the market. The ability to analyze orders with software can be extremely powerful. In the pit, traders had to add up numbers in their head to determine how many contracts were being traded. With computers, we can now quantify and categorize such orders by their different properties far faster than any human brain. So this brings us back to our main topic, level 2 data. As mentioned, level 2 data gives us information about limit orders. For instance, we can see that here at 4758, there are currently 181 contracts willing to be bought at that price. If we go away from the market on the sell side, we can see that there are 183 contracts willing to be sold at 67 quarter. So here at 59, there's currently 155 contracts willing to be bought at that price, 154, and obviously it'll change over time. But if you place a limit order here at the price, you will be placed in the queue. And when price comes down, assuming that this queue doesn't change too much, 156 roughly contracts would have to be traded through before you get filled. Market orders are orders to buy or sell at the best available price. These orders are for when a trader wants to enter a position right away, and these market orders are immediately matched up with limit orders in the queue. The market orders on the depth of market are indicated here under the last traded size column. So we can see that here are all the market orders entering the market and they're matching up with the best available bid and the best available offer or ask. So how can we use level two market data to analyze where the market might be going and also where traders are most likely to conduct business at certain price levels? There's a few tools that I use within Optimus Flow to answer some of those questions. Mainly I trade off of the depth of market. I use this to look at mainly the market orders and the limit orders closest to the market. But if you wanted to look at areas of liquidity, we can go up here to the menu and bring up 
the depth of market surface. We'll go ahead and change this to the S&P Mini. Now when you get on here, it's only going to show a certain number of levels. So you can right click, go to settings, and change the depth of market level count. We'll go ahead and go to 50. And just to start out, we'll do monochrome. And when we zoom out, what this is going to show are the level two orders that might provide liquidity in the market. So this is where we're trading at right now. If we look up here, we see this area. And right here where it says size, it's going to show you the number of orders at that certain price level. So here currently there's 523 contracts at 47.73. So when we look at the depth of market, we can scroll up to 73 and we'll see those orders here. There's 510 and 523. If we mark that on the chart, that's right above this high. So these are resting orders in the market to sell 500 contracts at 72.75 and 73. The reason that's important is because these are obviously large orders. Um, they've been in the market for a long time, which might indicate somebody is either willing to sell there at that amount, or they've possibly taken a long position and that's their exit. Obviously, we don't know that information, but we can use it to develop uh, our trading thesis. The other tool that I like to use uh, a lot is the footprint chart. And I've gone over in other videos how to set this up. But the reason I like this is because even though we may have a resting order here uh, as a bid or an offer, that doesn't necessarily indicate the full amount of business that someone is willing to do. Those are called iceberg orders. So sometimes traders will place limit orders as an iceberg order. And if they have to, let's say, buy 2,000 contracts here at 61, they'll place only a certain portion of that at one time. And then when they start to get filled on it, they will automatically reload that bid. The only way that we can see that uh, and, and how that plays out with market orders is the footprint chart. So if we go down here to, let's find a good spot. Let's say right here uh, at 61.25 when price came up, there were not 425 contracts wanting to be sold at that time. That was reloaded. And that can be reloaded by new traders. It can be reloaded by uh, existing traders that have sold there with an iceberg order. But that's why I like to use the level two data in conjunction with the footprint chart because the footprint chart will show you exactly how much business was done at that level despite how much uh, how, or how many contracts were originally offered at that price. I think one of the biggest things that can help you when analyzing level two market data is record keeping. Uh, every market and instrument is different. So this is where you'll have to do a bit of legwork on your own with good record keeping, taking notes when you see unusually high or low activity uh, at certain levels. Um, but this is where pattern recognition comes in and just knowing your market well enough to know that hey, this number or this size is unique and this is something to pay attention to. Um, but like I said, every market is different and uh, as you spend more time with the market that you're trading and analyzing level two market data, you'll be able to make better informed decisions about your trading uh, in conjunction with your thesis. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any other questions or comments, please visit us at OptimistFutures.com. Thank you.